disrupt America that I thought was a weird thing to happen. <laughs> Hello, one and all. Welcome to this edition of Kids Corner. It's been a fantastic day so far. So could there be another Candace Owens cancellation at the Daily Wire? Things are getting a little dicey over there. Because another member of the family has kind of spoke out. Kind of went a different approach to the constant pro-genocide, CIA, Mossad talking point that Ben Shapiro and others have been spewing constantly for 24 hours a day. Some other member of the Daily Wire has came out of the box, if you will, came out of the shadows of constant propaganda and is looking at this as a different approach. So this is in the result of a new executive order that was signed into the state of Texas that's been very controversial. So this is from uh, an ABC site in Texas, I think in Austin. And it says, Governor Greg Abbott issues executive order to fight anti-Semitism at Texas colleges and universities. Because if there's anything more dangerous out there in the world than constant bombs and the threat of end eradicating a civilization, it's walking through the doors of a college campus and people talking. It's so horrific out there that the state government <laughs> has to sign an executive order to track down college kids. Instead of ending the war, instead of, stopping the malfeasance and the manufacturing of this aggression that's leading to this genocide. We are just going to stop college campuses from practicing free speech. That's in the state of Texas. And, and they say, this is from, uh, this is their PBS site, saying that Texas has seen a significant increase in extremist and anti-Semitic incidents since 2021, a report says. So I just want to point out, though, that as they're trying to scare you with this, and they are trying to scare you with this, there's a reason why they're showing all these reports, why they're saying there's a rise in anti-Semitism, why, you know, there's a rise in extremism. And we've seen this throughout the four, four years now of the Joe Biden administration is that this is all fear mongering. This is all perpetual fear. They're manufacturing the aggression by saying that there's a bunch of anti-Semites out there. That there's a bunch of extremists, domestic terrorists, your neighbors, your friends, your family. They're all evil. They all want to, uh, you know, do wrongdoing in the world while the people that are actually doing the most un, the most unlawful, awful, disgusting things imaginable get away with this. The people that are actually engaging in the sl mass slaughter of people get away with this because they're publishing articles saying that other people in your community are, are anti-Semites and, and extremists and they're white supremacists and they're racists. That's all a trick. That's all a distraction for you to get angry at your family members, to get angry at members of your community and not the people that are actually doing the worst thing imaginable. So... Because of that, um, Matt Walsh, who is a contributor at the Daily Wire, I do believe that is the guy who did that documentary, um, What is a Woman, I think, that controversial documentary about uh, transgender. And um, I, I, I've, I've never seen it. Um, I don't know if I'm, go I'm ever going to see it, but um, it's good that we're at least having that conversation. I think that's a relevant question. Relevant question we should be asking, what is a woman? It's something that <laughs> apparently no one has really fully formed an actual answer to. So maybe we should have a documentary exploring that. Um, but here's Matt Walsh um, explaining to his audience, the Daily Wire audience, that maybe Greg Abbott um, has gone a bridge too far. That maybe... Canceling out college kids from their ability to practice the First Amendment and their ability to uh, free, freely assemble and protest is a little too much for the supposed independent state of Texas. Watch this. Today, we must cancel Governor Greg Abbott of Texas. Abbott has been impressive recently in his mission to defend the southern border, despite the Biden administration's efforts to prevent him from doing so. And so I am loath to cancel him in the midst of that fight. But he has uh, left me no choice. 
Here's the report from the ABC affiliate in Austin. Watch. The Israel-Hamas war has sparked protests around the world and in Austin. It's chants like these and other incidents at public universities that led Governor Greg Abbott to issue an executive order to fight anti-Semitism on college campuses. It requires universities to review and update free speech policies, include the definition of anti-Semitism in those policies, and enforce those policies, which could include expulsion. Now, I love how they add, include the definition of anti-Semitism in policies. I love how they have to add that in as if we already don't have a clear definition before any of this war happened, before Israel, Palestine, before this situation, before October 7th, there is a clear understanding of what was actually anti-Semitic. But because of the ADL, because of APEC, because of so much money that is being, uh, uh, that's being extracted on behest of continuing on this uh, genocide, the fact that this is a moneymaker, this is a business opportunity for the state of Israel, for, for the corporations that are uh, partnering with this, for the politicians that are getting fund backs from, uh, from the APEC lobby. What, what, what definition, what, what now definition are they going to add to this? Just like how they changed the definition for fully vaccinated. It used to be that fully vaccinated, there was a clear definition, but then they changed that when COVID came around because they wanted the propaganda. They want people in constant fear to move along to their agenda, just like how they're doing here. So they're going to change the definition of what it actually is to be anti-Semitic, which we know that the ADL has changed the goalposts frequently to, again, perpetuate people into their propaganda <laughs> and review and update free speech policies. This is just unbelievable. At, at, at all the stuff that's going on right now, the most concerning is apparently college students. College students walking in the halls and hearing voices that are different than theirs. Holy crap, you might have to hear a different opinion. Oh. I, 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 you know, this, this would be the time that Ben Shapiro would actually step up and I would agree with him that, you know, you're going to have to deal with that in the world. You're going to have to deal with difference of opinion. You're going to have to deal with that. Obviously, he didn't handle Candace Owens well. So, uh, Matt Walsh, he, it seems like he's walking on thin ice on this. A move members of the American Civil Liberties Union of Texas say could set off a wave of problems. When the government starts to infringe on protected speech and when the government starts to practice viewpoint discrimination, that has a trickle-down effect to all sorts of populations. The governor pointed to a rise in anti-Semitic acts and took aim at two student organizations, including UT's Palestine Solidarity Committee, which has led several protests. So the governor... Notice how they don't ever tell you what incidents um, that they're saying that there's a rise of anti-Semitism. You ever notice that? They tell you that there's a rise of, you know, anti-Semitic crimes. There's a bunch of hate crimes running around. But they don't tell you what specific incidents that are that there are leading to this. They don't tell you that was there a swastika painted somewhere? Was there, you know, big, like what exactly happened? They don't give you specific examples to it. They're just telling you that there's a bunch of anti-Semitics around. Again, to fear monger you. To fear monger you, to think that everyone around you is an awful person. Naming two specific student founded organizations as organizations that are practicing hate speech or that are in violation of his order is viewpoint discrimination in a really explicit way. So Governor Greg Abbott here has committed the ultimate sin. He has forced me to agree with a woman from the ACLU with pronouns next to her name. The ACLU is rarely correct about anything these days, and people with pronouns next to their name are correct even less often than that. But in this case, they happen to have stumbled on the truth as Abbott signs an executive order to fight anti-Semitism on college campuses 
And what does fighting anti-Semitism mean? Well, here's the statement that the governor's office put out this week. Quote, Governor Greg Abbott today issued an executive order to fight the increase in acts of anti-Semitism at colleges and universities in Texas and ensure a safe learning environment for Jewish students and all Texans. Quote, anti-Semitism is never acceptable in Texas and we will do everything we can to fight it, said Greg, uh, Governor Abbott. The state of Texas stands with, the, with Israel and the Jewish community and we must escalate our efforts to protect against anti-Semitism at Texas colleges and universities and across our state. Across the country, acts of anti-Semitism have grown in number, size, and danger to the Jewish community since Hamas's deadly attack on October 7th. Texas took immediate action to protect Jewish schools, synagogues, and other key locations. Many Texas colleges and universities have also uh, acted quickly to condemn anti-Semitism. But some radical organizations on our campuses engage in acts that have no place in Texas. Now we must work to ensure that our college campuses are safe spaces for members of the Jewish community. The Again, no... No criminal examples, no no details of what is actually um, why they had to put this bill together. Are there actually horrific scenes that are, are, are a cause to why we need an executive order to snap down on students' rights of free speech? Like, they're, they're stating that there's so much anti-Semitism rising and going around. What, where, where exactly? Are people saying bad words? Are they like, well, there's no, there's no clear definition of what led to this. It's just the fact that they want, oh, we need a safe space for the Jewish students of Texas and Texas stands with this. So it, so it sounds like this is ADL marketing that APEC is leading in, that they're trying to force this down to the university and college campuses. Because again, a lot of young people, and this is one of the reasons why they're trying to ban TikTok and other social media platforms, is because young people are witnessing firsthand what's happening over there. They're witnessing firsthand. They're not believing the garbage of mainstream media. They're not believing the garbage that the intelligence community is forcing upon them. They're not believing the garbage that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are telling them. They're able to look at their phones and go, oh, wow, there's actually a genocide. And that has nothing to do with the Jewish race. That has nothing to do with the Jewish faith. And in fact, the most people that are against the state of Israel and the war crimes that they're committing are actually Orthodox, Orthodox Jews. And they don't ever point that out. There's more Jewish voices that are against this genocide than there are for it. What? Where's that statistic? Where's that? Where's that going to be placed up, uh, upon these news articles? Are are they gonna Are they gonna actually address that? But anyway, here's more. Of the this. governor's executive order requires that all higher education institutions in Texas review their free speech policies to establish appropriate punishments for anti-Semitic rhetoric on college and university campuses. Ensure that policies that address the sharp rise of anti-Semitic acts are enforced, and include the definition of anti-Semitism in free speech policies. Oh my God. So this is an executive order targeting what he describes as anti-Semitic acts and rhetoric. In fact, he is ordering colleges in the state to establish appropriate punishments for this rhetoric, which he deems anti-Semitic. And he says explicitly that these offensive statements must be shut down so that college campuses are safe spaces for Jewish people. And again, they generalize rhetoric. They make it so vague in general that anything, anything they could put down and say is anti-Semitic, just like how here in Canada, they're creating laws that are saying that they're stopping the rise of hate speech. Well, hate speech is not a specific term. It's a generalized term. Nobody knows exactly directly what is hateful and what isn't. And they do that purposely to weave out so that they can have the, the open the floodgates and, and now it's anything that they disagree with anything they don't like they could permit it as hate speech they can go against you just like here they could say anything is anti-semitic and go against you even if that has nothing to do with Jew judaism has nothing to do with the jewish faith nothing whatsoever other than the fact that you're pointing out that country a is doing a genocide to country b which is the most basic common knowledge that everybody is witnessing.
That's why there's so many of these protests worldwide, except for the United States politicians and the elites that are getting paid by the Israeli lobby that are being blackmailed by the Mossad agents. Now, I seem to remember Republicans spending the past, I don't know, 10 years complaining about the safe space mentality on college campuses. And now we, here we have a, yes. the Republican governor of Texas issuing an executive order commanding college campuses to be safe spaces. So we seem to have lost the plot here somewhere along the line. There are a lot of reasons why governors should not be issuing. Oh, man, that's the kicker of this. That's the kicker of this. They spent over a decade. Over a decade, even the Daily Wire, even Ben Shapiro has spent, I would say, majority of his career talking about, hey, you are you won't get a safe space, uh, safe space in college. You have to you have to deal with the real world and in the real world. There's going to be difference of opinions. There's going to be controversy. There's going to be people that are going to think differently and have a different viewpoint than you. You're going to have to deal with it, and you're going to have to be a grown-up and act like a civilized adult. They spent over a decade telling people that, and here they are at the flip of a hat because now it's about Israel. It's a war that they actually do like, so now we got to flip the hat and go, oh, God, now we got to create safe spaces. Now we got to make sure that one protected group of all the students in, in the college campus make sure they're the top priority. Oh, gotta love hypocrisy. Executive orders to combat anti-Semitism or any other form of bigotry. But I'll focus on just three of those reasons. First of all, violence, vandalism, threats, and deliberate incitement are already illegal. Now, some have defended this executive order by arguing that its its real intent is to crack down on these you know sorts of crimes that are committed against Jewish people. But again, these are crimes. They're already illegal. If they're happening anywhere in Texas, whether on a college campus or not, the state already has all of the authority it needs to arrest and prosecute the culprits. You don't need to make an illegal thing even more illegal. You don't need an executive order making it extra illegal. Just enforce the laws that are already on the books. Yep. So if, say, somebody is vandalizing a synagogue or assaulting a Jewish person or explicitly calling for violence against Jews, they can already be arrested. This order will do nothing to stop or punish those crimes because they already have the laws in place to stop or punish those crimes. And if somehow they didn't have the laws in place, if, let's say, Texas had forgotten to make vandalism or assault illegal, well, then the solution would be to pass a law making those violent acts illegal. But even then, this executive order would be the wrong way to do it. One, because it's an executive order, not a law. And two, because it seeks to protect one particular group instead of all groups. So vandalism, assault, etc., they are wrong no matter who they target. They are equally wrong no matter who they target. They should be prosecuted with equal vigor regardless of the demographics of the victim. We do not need laws protecting Jewish people. We need laws protecting people to include Jews, obviously, and everybody else. And if we already have those laws, which we do, then we don't need a second law or order making these crimes extra specially illegal if you commit them against a certain group. But the real point here has nothing to do with physical crimes. The real point is the bit about anti-Semitic rhetoric, which brings us to the second problem related to the issue that I just raised in the first. Let's pretend for a moment that we all agreed that so-called hate speech should be banned from universities. Let's pretend that hateful rhetoric really had no place in Texas or anywhere else, as the governor would say. Now, I don't agree with this idea, as I'll explain in a moment, but, but let's grant it for the sake of argument. Well, then. Why wouldn't the executive order establish appropriate punishments, quote unquote, for hateful rhetoric against anyone of any group? And if for whatever reason it was decided that we needed to actually specifically outline every single group that you cannot say hateful things about, then why are certain groups conspicuously left off the list? It is rather hard to imagine Greg Abbott ever issuing an executive order calling for punishments for anti-white rhetoric on college campuses, in spite of the fact that anti-whiteism is not only incredibly pervasive on every major university campus in the country, but it's also part of the curriculum. Students are forced to listen to anti-white screeds in the classroom from their professors. Every 
hateful thing imaginable has been said on college campuses about white people by staff, by administrators, by professors, let alone also, of course, the students. Yet, to my knowledge, Greg Abbott has never issued an executive order addressing that. Why is that? You could, again, easily kill all these birds with one stone if you just banned all hateful statements against all people. But he doesn't do that. That doesn't happen anywhere. Instead, certain groups are singled out for protections, while certain groups are given no special protections at all. Third, I make that last point, as I said, for the sake of argument. My actual position is that there should not be any hate speech laws or policies at all. I reject hate speech as a concept, as a category. Hate speech, if it's anything, is simply speech that expresses hate. And some speech does express hate. But what I reject is the idea that any governmental authority should ever be in the business of trying to read the mind of a speaker and determine whether there was hatred behind it and then punish the statement based on their own interpretation of the emotional state of the person who made the statement. I reject that completely. I also reject the idea that any form of rhetoric at all should be banned or punished on college campuses. Threats and incitements are already illegal, as we've established. So putting those aside, we are left with opinions, claims, ideas, exhortations, uh, declarations. And as for those, even if they're wrong, even if they're baseless, even if they're offensive, even if they are, yes, hateful, they should not be banned or punished, and they certainly should not be the subject of an executive order from the governor's office. We cannot pretend to care in the slightest bit about free speech if we are banning speech on the basis that it's hateful towards protected groups. This is not just an infringement on free speech. It is the total eradication of free speech. Because after all, the only kind of speech that really needs legal protection in the first place is, is, is the speech that is deemed hateful and inappropriate by the powers that be. Speech that is pleasant and uncontroversial and friendly and gentle That doesn't need to be protected. I mean, you could live in a country with no free speech. You could live in North Korea. You could be locked up in a communist prison camp and you'd still be able to say all those sorts of things. So when a person in power says, you have free speech, unless it's speech that I find to be really inappropriate personally, that's another way of saying that you don't have free speech. And this point, I would think, is obvious. So... It looks like Matt Walsh's days are numbered at the Daily Wire because he makes such great points. And I never thought I would actually agree with members of the of the Daily Wire. Um, you know, there's things that I like about Candace Owens. There's things I dislike with Candace Owens. There's things I like about Matt Walsh. There's things I disagree with. Um, I, I can't think of the other names. Uh, I think Cooper was Brett Cooper uh, being one of them on there. Um, and that's the joy of hearing different opinions. And this is why I'm a free speech absolutist. This is why I've defended the principle, the principle of free speech, because that's what it is. It's a principle. It's no matter whether you like the speech or not, it's regardless that you defend that person's right of speech, because how do they differ, uh, have different rights than you as a person? And this is why, you know, when people start mentioning about free speech and censorship, uh, for example, like Alex Jones, Alex Jones is controversial. Alex Jones may not be a fan favorite for everybody. There's things that I disagree with him on, but I defend his right to be a person that's allowed to express his own opinion, because why is that different from me? Why is that different from you? Why is that different for somebody else? You can't cookie cutter and pick and choose who gets free speech and who doesn't just because you don't agree with it. And the biggest, the biggest reason you should be fighting for free speech and the biggest loudest voice uh, to, to defend free speech is the people that are, uh, that have a different opinion than you, the people you really don't like, you should be defending their free speech because if everyone likes the same thing, then there's no need to defend it. But if someone thinks differently or I have a different viewpoint, or if I think that opinion's a little too much, I'm not going to silence them out. I'm not going to cancel them, but I will defend their right to say that opinion.
So that has been my case across the board. And like I said, and you know, and he brings up the other point too of we already have laws. We already have laws in place. Just like how I defended free speech. Because people will attack me and say, well, what about, you know, the hateful content? What about if it rise to violence? There's already laws in place that if you threaten someone with violence, if you're causing uh, a reaction to, co- to to manufacture some sort of aggression, there's already laws in place that will protect that. But to go an extra step further to ban opinions on college campuses or social media or news pop, like the f- censorship it has gone amok. And the more you keep crepping that door open, the more it's just going to floodgate to silence out everybody. And that is what I've said that, you know, you have to defend, even if you don't like Alex Jones, you have the principle to understand that you have to defend his right of free speech, just like if someone was trying to defend your right of free speech. That's the principal factor of the First Amendment. And that's what Matt Walsh is saying here. There's a principle involved with it. Why do they need an executive order to protect the speech and to protect and protect the people that are a tiny minority to the rest of the college campuses? And if they were gonna if they were gonna uh, put this law to, together, why are they not doing it for everybody? Why is it one specific area or one specific group, one specific uh, people that get this specific specific treatment beside other people? So it, it it it's it's just the most basic understanding of the principle of free speech. And I just know it's not going to sit well with the Daily Wire, with Ben Shapiro, um, who, again, have been parroting uh, Mossad quotes, have been parroting the, um, the intelligence community and, 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 and the rest of the rhetoric uh, that you see 24 hours a day by the mainstream establishment that is brought to you by uh, APEC lobby and Israel lobbies and uh, the blackmail of Mossad agents. Like, it, it's just crazy. And here we are demonizing people on college campuses for practicing their principled right of free speech. We're going after college students for basically an assumption because there's no real criminal case. There's no evidence to back the claim that there is these anti-Semitic, you know, hateful bigots out there. And like and like Matt Walsh said, if there were, they would already be punished. They would already be pr- criminally prosecuted under the law, but they don't have that. So this is just another generalized censorship tactic to go after uh, voices for Palestine who want to stop the genocide, who want ceasefire, and silence them out to push the war agenda, to push the military-industrial complex, the APEC lobby, and the Isra- and, and the Israel Intelligence Board to push their agenda to allow this genocide to happen. And if we really gave a damn about hate speech, if we really gave a damn about protecting people from from one person's speech of violence and hateful rhetoric, then why aren't politicians on that list? Why is it this why is the CIA have social media accounts? Why is the FBI have social media accounts because I know that they're posting hateful, bigoted rhetoric. I know that they're pushing division and sowing, uh, sowing, uh, you know, violent acts towards individuals. Why are they allowed to have social media accounts, but college students aren't allowed to peacefully protest about a, about this topic. So there's a lot of flaws to this. And Matt Walsh perfectly points it out, which unfortunately, when you point something out like that at the Daily Wire with Ben Shapiro, it seems like you just, you know, you're on very thin ice. And I, you know, Matt Walsh, I don't really know you, but um, I'm glad you spoke up about this. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Because, this is apparently how Candace Owens 
uh, frantically, you know, got kicked out of the club. And Candace Owens, you know, I, I assume, I don't know the exact wordage that got her canceled, but I'm assuming it's something like this. I'm assuming it's as simple as the notion of genocide is genocide. You're mass slaughtering people. And the fact that we have governments and state governments implementing laws that are oppressing First Amendment rights to college kids rather than stopping the bloodshed overseas is just absolutely barbaric. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And Greg Abbott knows this. The, the, the state of Texas knows this. Even the college campuses know this. How stupid this is. But maybe if you follow the money, maybe if you figure out that somewhere down the line, they're told this by a superior power, and this just seems like another authoritarian move done in the spirit of protecting Jewish citizens or Jewish students at these college campuses and pledging their support for Israel, which is, you know, pledging support for Israel. I love how they say support. Like it's a like it's a college team. <laughs> like you're supporting a football team. No, you're you're advancing a complete slaughter, a complete massacre of a civilization. That doesn't sound like supporting. That doesn't sound like good nature. But if you tell that to people, you're considered hateful compared to the people that are actually causing the actions of mass violence. That's just this twisted, sycophantic world that we're in.